another live Q&A. I am uh, running solo today. And we're a little bit old school today, you guys. A little bit old school. I've got my camera and my mic all set up for my new office, but I'm at home today. So I'm in the process of trying to structure and reorganize. And so things are a little bit old school. This is kind of how it was in the beginning with the you know, using my iMic camera, uh, my iMac camera, the built-in one, and uh, hey, but it's not about being pretty, it's about providing solid content. All right, so today is the Express Entry Live Q&A sponsored by Journey Business Plans. Thank you, Journey, the ones that I go to all the time when I need business plans for my clients. Um, thanks for the sponsorship and thanks for your, all of your support. Um, I also want to point out that they are a heavy sponsor of our Canadian Immigration Podcast as well. So if you have not yet gone through the process of subscribing to the podcast, do it because we are having a lot of fun over there. One of the things that we specifically are doing is our impossible Canadian trivia. And uh, it was a real battle for this round three. It was a real battle. But if you go to Holthy Immigration Law or the Canadian Immigration Institute site, and let me see if I can flip over here. I've got so many different screens. And uh, let's see if this is the winner here. Oh, not quite. Give me a second, guys. i got to pull me up here. I'm adjusting a whole bunch of things. There we go. I'm back. Okay. So here, and let's just adjust it. On my main um, law firm website, you'll see right here that there's podcast link. And so click on that link right there. It will take you here to the podcast. And uh, yes, you absolutely have to listen to the, the most recently dropped episode of the podcast where all of the members of Holthy Immigration Law jump on to share uh, insight on the latest updates in immigration. And then we dive into the impossible Canadian trivia. So make sure that you connect in. Make sure that you, um, that you listen and play along and see how many questions you can get right. The trivia itself is all based on the four pillars of Canadian history, geography, culture, and, of course, immigration. So there you have it, you guys. Check that out if you haven't subscribed. And then also remember, Alicia and I are going strong with our business immigration series, which is the top four reasons. Well, the latest was the top four reasons for LMI refusals. But you'll see we also have uh, a number of them where most companies go wrong with LMIAs. Um, uh, then, of course, our inaugural Impossible Trivia. So go check that out. There's a whole bunch of episodes there. And if you haven't subscribed yet, um, iTunes, Spotify, please do that. Okay. All right. So let's jump in and let's see who is tuning in with us. And like I said, it's going to be a little bit rough and tumble as I slide around here. But I think everybody can hear me okay. Uh, picking up. You can tell the sound quality just isn't the same. But hey, we'll do the best that we can in these circumstances. All right, let's see what we've got. Who is connecting in to join us today? Uh, let me just flip over here and we will... Uh, boy, it sure is. I, I miss my little uh, my little stream deck bouncing back and forth. Okay, let's see. So to bottom, hey, great to have you connecting in from Mississauga. Thanks. And make sure you, that you guys listen in wherever you're listening in. Please post a comment and let me know where you are in this fine world we have here. Okay, um... Amara is already throwing out a question there. May one work in Quebec after getting PR from CEC class? This is, you know, ultimately it's where you reside. And as a part of the Canadian experience class, one of the obligations you have is to demonstrate that you will not, or that you reside in a province outside the province of Quebec, essentially. Okay, uh, Uzair is here. Good to see you. Thanks for connecting in. Let's see who else we have here. Um, we've got Victoria, who's also connecting in. And please post comments. Um, that I want to hear where you're tuning in from. Let's see. Elise is over in DRC, Congo. That's fantastic. Great to have you here. Uh, Dahlia is tuning in from Hamilton. Thank you, Dahlia. It's great to have you guys all here to join us today. Um, oh, let's see. We've got Olu who's over in Nigeria, over on Facebook. Fantastic. Nice to see that that feed is working out for us. And yes, Kior. Uh, mystery says finally sunny in Toronto I know I think all of us are just waiting and hoping that that the summer's gonna be here my wife and I were taking our little dog Simba out for a walk last night and once again it was cold here and what what's the temperature here in Lethbridge let's see today today what do we got in Lethbridge the fine city of Lethbridge the temperature is negative two degrees Celsius so 
it's still a little cool, a little cool for my liking, but, um, well, with any luck, summer will be here. All right, let's see who else we've got. We've got a bunch of people connecting in. Um, Ayesha, good to see you. Thanks for connecting in. And um, uh, Cicada is over in Toronto. Hi, Cicada. Great to have you here. Let's see who else we've got here. Oh, Strawberry. I love that. Strawberry Lequa, Lequa, Lequa. Watching from Toronto. Welcome. Great to have you here. Um, Dahlia's asking more. Can I get any more information about Spuzzle sponsorship? Yes, absolutely. Remember, Dahlia and all of you that the Canadian Immigration Institute is also driving um, the, our series of, of immigration uh, DIY courses. And I just finished an awesome Express Entry one last week. And those of you who are looking to get more information on other topics like spells of sponsorship, I'll just flip this back here. Uh, la, 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 la. Let's see here. I got way too many screens. Wow, this is way more difficult than I thought. <laughs> let's try this here. There we go. That's the one I'm looking for. Right here, you can see on the Canadian Immigration Institute, we have a series of courses. And not only the Express Entry one we just completed last week, Study Permit course is there and available on demand. And of course, the Spousal Sponsorship is as well. And these courses are packed full of information, all designed to help you navigate your way through this crazy world that we call Canadian Immigration. Okay, I'm going to try to adjust this a little bit and get it up where it's easier for me to flip back and forth. There we go. Okay, so let's uh, continue down giving more shout outs. So, so Dal uh, Dahlia, if you have any specific questions about disposal sponsorship, I'd be delighted to answer those as well. Okay, um, all right, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Mansour says, CEC draw today. It probably makes sense, you guys, right? Alicia and I, we talked about this, and it's it's just, it's really quite amazing when you think about it. Uh, what has been happening. Now, I know a lot of you out there are just really frustrated, especially that are in Canada, wondering what is going on. You know, is there any particular reason why Minister Fraser here is is not issuing CEC draws? But as we as we learned just recently, the there's no there's no stopping them. There's no slowing down the numbers that are being extended. So we've had seven thousand that were issued last Wednesday. So. And I said in the video on Wednesday before they launched this, before they released this, I, I did not believe in any way, shape, or form that they were going to do another round of invitations. But it caused the scores to drop down to 484. My goodness. I like If I someone was to say that Express Entry would be sitting around 484, say, two years ago, I never would have believed them. You know, that it would have stayed that high. But that's the world that we're in right now because of so many people that are here in Canada on work permits. And so they've got those extra 35 or 40 bonus points in addition to international school. And that's what's driving these scores up above what a traditional individual would have with pure human capital. And I think we've talked about this before. At least I talk about it a lot in terms of express entry. If you have a master's degree, three years of foreign work experience, you're 29 years old, and you have at least a CLB 9 um, in your language exam, you're going to sit at 469 points. So that's, can you imagine that, getting a master's degree and three years work experience by the time you're 29? So that's what we're looking at, and that isn't going to cut it. So you need French, you need something else, a sibling in Canada, you can need work experience in Canada, or education in Canada. So all of those things play a role, or of course the magical job offer, which is becoming much more frequent and much more common. And um, I just wanted, I do want to uh, pull up one thing, let's see if I can pull them up here. Um, this, I now have the ability to do this. So I want to give a, a quick shout out here to this link right here, recruiting at goldoradocontracting.ca. This page has been specifically set up um, to allow uh, individuals to um, to apply for positions. And so um, Goldorado is uh, one of the, the companies that we work with. And they actually have um, a bunch of spots open for heavy equipment operators. So if you are a heavy equipment operator, absolutely reach out. The email address is right here, recruiting at goldoradocontracting.ca. And I strongly, strongly encourage you to, um, yeah, to if, if you have experience and you're looking for an opportunity in Canada, they pay really well and they are actively recruiting for positions. So um, send them an email there and tell them that you heard about it here on the uh, on the Canadian Immigration 
um, Institute's live Q&A, all right? And so, yes, there's lots happening, and uh, especially when it comes to job offers now, there's far, far more opportunities now than there ever have been. So, yes, it's quite, quite cool, quite cool. Let me just see here. Just give me a second. I'm going to pull up one more. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. All right. Okay, let's see what else we've got here. So, Mansur, who knows? Maybe there's going to be a live. Uh, uh, so maybe there's going to be another round of invitations. But, wow, two back-to-back -back 7,000. That's, yeah, that's crazy. Okay, we've got Yulia's down in Bogota. Great. It's great to have you connecting in. We've got uh, Kelvin is over in Mombasa, Kenya. Hello, Kelvin. Great to have you here. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Oh, Al oh, Fati, great connecting in once again um, on Facebook. It's great to have you as well. I remember you from from last week. And let's see what else we have here. Um, okay, we'll pull up Manzur's plea here. So Manzur, just wait. I wonder if I have some accompanying music to go with this. We have to we have to do this right. Let's see. I wonder. Um, oh, ignore that. Let's see. I'm trying to see if I have any. Trying to find the right sound effect. I don't think I have one that I can really play in the background. That's uh, that's going to work for us here. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, sometimes it's it's kind of fun to try to find the uh, the proper background. Let's see here. Answer draw. Let's see. That's not it. I don't have a good sound effect. I was going to play a good sound effect. Oh, I got to drop a Fermanzur here. But he says, oh, actually, here we do need to pull up. The minister, though, that's that's an absolute minister, so that he can an absolute must, so that he can respond to this. So we'll put the minister here. Manzur says, "Oh, Sean Fraser, hear our plea. Grant us the PR we seek to see. We came to your land with hopes and dreams to study and work, or so it seems. But alas, our visas are limited. Our futures are restricted." <laughs> that's awesome, Manzur. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. And I know that it's actually genuine and heartfelt. So many of you are just kind of stuck, right? Um, okay. Uh, Julia says, hey, Mark, it's Julie from Egypt. I heard that when I created my Express Entry profile after six months, I, I may get more points automatically. Is that right? Okay. I'm not quite sure what that means. Uh, you need to have at least one year of work experience. Um but completing your Express Entry Profile after six months, you get more points automatically. I, I don't know what that would be referring to. Um, <laughs> Akish, Akish says, you only the lawyer said that is possible to get extension for post-grad holder 2023. And here we go. <laughs> yes, here we go. We did do that watch party, didn't we? All right, let's see what else we have here as we give some more shout outs. Um, okay, uh, Fatih says, hey Mark, I hope you're well. Do you have any information about the new visa process for Turkish earthquake victims? They said it should be effective starting from today, but I'm wondering, is there a special process to make the application? This is one of the issues that we always face. There's big announcements, and then the actual program delivery instructions are not released in a timely fashion. So we're just waiting, Fatih, we're just waiting um, uh, to see when they're going to actually release those instructions. But uh, the moment they do, we'll make sure to let everybody know. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Um, okay, uh, um, Ashish over in LinkedIn. So now we finally have LinkedIn. We've got Facebook. We've got YouTube. Don't have Twitter. Um, I tried to work through my native Ecamm app, but it was just giving me problems with trying to connect people in from all these different platforms. And I'm absolutely delighted to see that we are reaching people on a number of different platforms. So Asha says, can you please help? How long does it take to add a name on an LMIA for a foreign worker? Well, we've recently obtained a number of LMIAs for companies and um, it really does not take long. It just depends on, well, not all companies are treated equally. When you have large multinational and global companies and or you have local companies <coughs> large um, you know national companies they tend to have more direct lines to um, to service Canada to get those names put on so it's literally a matter of days 
Um, but uh, for other individuals, usually we typically say it can take a week or sometimes up to two, depending upon, um, yeah, just depending upon the individual employer. So um, if you are waiting to have your name added to an LMIA, congratulations. Um, Ashish, that's awesome. Congratulations. Okay, let's see here. Let's see if there's any more shout outs. We've got Abdul over on Facebook from Sri Lanka. He's watching on the Canadian Immigration Institute Facebook page. Welcome, Abdul. Great to have you here. Um, all right. And Ashish, he says, hey, can you please help? Okay, well, Ashish, the reality is it's the employer who does that. It's the employer who adds names on. So Understand, if you actually have a job offer with that company and they have an open LMIA, then it's they who reach out to our, um, to Service Canada to get um, yeah to get your uh, your name added onto their LMIA. Okay, another Facebook uh, Juste says, can the required funds be in euros instead of Canadian proof of funds part? Yeah, you just provide a currency uh, equivalency and um, and you know to show that the conversion of what it would be in Canadian dollars and that's totally fine that's something that I teach in my Canadian uh, in, in my express entry course all the time so we cover that in, um, in in our express entry course and like I said the when you when you're going through here I'll, I'll just show you kind of what it looks like so in my express entry if you haven't it the, the card is still open you can still access it these are all of the different courses that I've created over the over the years so view product right here. If you go here, you'll see that in module six, I have a specific section that is all dedicated to documents. And you can see passports, medicals, police, education, everything that you need is here. And there's and then on page two, you can see there's proof of funds. And in here, I have a standalone video all on its own that's 22 minutes long that talks about proof of funds, talks about what the requirements are. There's a ton of different um, documents that you know that can be downloaded as well as instructions and and guidance and everything that uh, you know that indiv individuals would need to make sure that they're preparing their their proof of funds in a in a manner that IRCC will accept. So uh, that's a great question, Juste. It's great to have you connecting in on Facebook. Okay, let's see here. Um, uh, Fati says, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. You're very, very welcome. And let's see here. Um, <laughs> totally, Chloe says, good morning, Mark. First of all, you look 10 years younger. It could be the no glasses look. Well, I think it's actually my HD camera here on my computer who uh, hides all of my flaws. And yes, guys, I have... I've got some new eyes, essentially. I really struggled with being able to see. And um, I do, on occasion, still crack open some readers here to, uh, to get the, the fine print. <laughs> but, uh, but it's quite amazing. Never in my life have I had 20-20 vision, and that's what I have now. Um, it was not cheap, but I was at a situation where it was hard to see the screen. And I've had so much screen time over the years that... Well, the reality is it's got to have an impact. So I'm actually trying to get out more. I'm really, really trying to get out more because there's just, yeah, there is so much, um, so, you know, so much that pulls me into the office that I'm just, yeah, I'm not even able to, uh, to, to get out and get a little break from the screen. I can sit in front of here, you guys, for 12 hours a day without moving, you know, just talking to people and, and, doing consultations and reviews and live streams and, you know, even recording podcasts, which is the podcast I do record as well, right in, um, uh, right in the, the, the same interface, the Ecamm interface. So um, I'll show you one thing here. We'll just flip over here to this blank screen and I'll show you. This is what my dog and Simba and I have been doing lately. So we were out. You can see the snow hit us before we came back, but that's Simba. He's my faithful companion. And we spend a lot of time just going out walking. And on my chest, you can't quite see it, but I've got a little clip from my um, my awesome little Nikon. Is it a P1000 that's got this 125 times zoom, which is crazy. And it's so fun to go out and just see the animals. And there's porcupines and deer and coyotes and everything you can imagine are out there. And uh, we got about three quarters of the way back and then the snow started to come down on us. But oh my goodness, it was so, so fun with him. And uh, yeah, Simba and I just had a great time out there. And we, we try to get out there. It's, it's um, the Alberta Conservation Association has a number of different, uh, you know, sections of land where uh, you can just go and access and walk and explore. And 
you know, some of them are dedicated for fishing, some are dedicated for, for hunting and for just exploring, and it's really, really cool. So, yeah, Simba and I had a, a fun time, and I propped my camera up and just snapped that little shot. But, uh, yes, so that's what I love to do, and that's what I'm trying to do more of to, to get rid of some of this, you know, COVID weight that's never left me. So, all right. So thanks, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Chloe. I appreciate that uh, shout out. I think you guys. I've told you, I'm, I'm, I'm rocking fifty years old right now. Crazy, hard to even believe. Hard to believe. Okay, um, okay. Vita says, "Hey, Mark, watching from Toronto. My son got approved for a work permit. Me, the post grad work permit holder. Will he be still included in my PR application? It all comes down to his age." So if your son is dependent, not married, and is basically tw 21 years old or younger, then they can still be included as a dependent on your permanent resident application. Okay, Asha says, I'm waiting to add the name on the LMIA ESDC. How long does it take to add name on LMIA for foreign worker? Which employer have already positive LMIA? That's, so there's the answer. So it's like it, could, like, it could be a matter of days. It, usually about a week, one week to two weeks is kind of the range. So that's typically what we say. Okay. <clears throat> um, Uzair says, uh, are T4 slips enough to prove Canadian work experience or we need notice of assessment as well? I have not filed for the previous year yet. T4s are fine. Pay slips, T4s, and reference letters, that's what I teach in my course. And uh, that's what we use with all of our clients when we're doing our collaborative reviews. So absolutely make sure that... Um, yeah, that you have those and no, and uh, a notice of assessment is not required. It's not. Um, okay, Bacino says, Benny says, hey, just one doubt is the uh, the Alberta Advantage Immigration Program Express Entry not calling anyone without family ties? Um, yeah, absolutely they are. People that are in Alberta already working are the ones that are getting heavily, heavily targeted through that process. Rami, great to have you over from Thunder Bay. Um uh, okay, this is an interesting one, and Igor and I are actually working forward in trying to build out our citizenship uh, DIY course. It says, on what date do the days start to count towards citizenship? The day of COPER or the day we actually receive the PR card? It's the date of COPER. So the PR card is just an evidence of your permanent residence, but your landing date is the date that you count. That is when you become a permanent resident of Canada. The date that you actually um, appear at the port of entry and land or you complete, you get the notification through the eCOPER process um, that you are now a permanent resident. Okay, um, yes, Melwin, we've seen this, and I don't have an answer for this glitch. We've heard other people, 489, you should have received an invitation, submitted last year, September, not invited in the last express entry draw. Yep. And really, it doesn't matter when you submitted it, if you're at 49, when the draw was 44, you should have received one. So, um, so we'll just, yeah, we'll have to monitor it, Melvin. I don't know what to tell you. There's lots of issues. Um, okay, let's see what else here. Uh, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this one up, ask me, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ring this right here. That bell means, dude, you've got too much going on for me to be able to properly answer this in the context of a live stream. So I highly recommend that you slide over to our firm website and that you actually book a consultation because the the, the reality is um, it's too hard for me to really provide any direct advice on this. So, um, okay, but, uh, but let's try to get something general out of it, okay? So re you received an incoming correspondent, spouse independent children, status changed to accompanying, okay, fees allocated for dependents, that shows GCMS no, um, Shows my GCMS, but didn't get any update from RC since uh, since six months. Okay, this is not uncommon. All right, whenever you add people after the fact, after you file, processing processing times are tossed out the window. They can take as long as they want to. So not uncommon, uncommon at all. Um, especially if dependents are outside of Canada for the process to drag on. And you remember, I think you guys have looked at this so many times before. At least I pull it up, I swear, every single time we do, um, we do a live stream like this, I pull it up. So let's slide over and I'll show you what I mean. So if you look here, <clears throat> processing times, 
And if you're going with economic immigration, and then let's go Canadian experience class. Canadian experience class in and of itself is 12 months. Any time that you have dependents overseas, I tend to look more at the skilled worker federal to see what the processing times are. And you can see what they have here, 30 months. Now, I'm not saying by any stretch that it's going to be 30 months for you, um, ask me. But the reality is, once you try to add a dependent on, if they're outside of Canada, then you're going to be in a situation where processing times could easily climb above six months. It could be 12 months. It could be longer. Heck, with processing times listed as 30 months, which is quite insane, um, you know, the, the government is definitely under-promising in terms of how fast these applications are going to go through. I just had a, a visit with a, a client um, that got their, <laughs> they got their, their, their permanent residence in under three months under the Federal Skilled Worker Program. And uh, like some go through quickly and uh, some take longer. So it just depends. Okay, um, let's see. And I'm trying to pull out questions. I'm not going to be able to answer everybody. So I'm trying to pull out questions that are going to be the most beneficial to as many people as possible. Um, okay, I'm going to bring this one up, Nando, Nandan, because lots of people are asking these same questions. So he says, hey, I am an Indian in the U.S., finished my master's and one year of work here. Looking to move to Canada shortly, what would you suggest is the best way to look forward? Express entry or work visa? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, when it comes to express entry, if your points are in the range where you're getting rounds of invitations, like where you're hitting that 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 CRS level, then absolutely permanent residence is the route you're going to go. You would never waste time with a work permit. But if it looks like your scores are just a little bit under, and uh, I need a lot more information uh, than than what you've provided here. This is what we do in our consultations. Um, then at that stage, um, no matter what, uh, uh, you know, no matter what you, you think you're going to do in terms of express entry, if your score isn't high enough, then you're going to have to look at other alternatives. And if you have an opportunity for to come and work in Canada, you've got a job offer from a Canadian company, maybe they can obtain a labor market impact assessment for you, then absolutely, Nandan, then that's the direction that you would go. Okay. Um, Okay, Chloe says, can one LMIA be used for me and my husband? We're both given our individual job offers, but one LMIA where it's open for three workers. Okay, well, understand, if your spouse is accompanying you, then you have an ability to get a spousal open work permit if your position is skilled. Now, we're waiting for the indication from IRCC when they're going to open it up to allow dependents of, of uh, low skill, like basically tier four or five, the lower the lower ones, uh, to allow their spouses to get open work permits. But right now, if your LMIA is based on a skilled position, tier three or higher, your spouse can apply for an open work permit to come. So you only need one LMIA. Good question, Chloe. Good question. Okay. Um, all right. So Kior Mystery says, I am working remotely for my BC employer as software developer. Can I apply for BC Tech PNP from Ontario? Highly unlikely that BC is going to extend a nomination for someone who is not actually living in BC. Simple as that. If I was, uh, you know, the program directors for any of the various provincial nominee programs and there were individuals that were living in other provinces, they there's a strong indicator that they probably do not want to int or intend to live in my province and I'm not going to use one of those precious nomination spots uh, for someone that I'm not really really certain he has ties to my province and is intends to actually reside here so I think it'd be very very unlikely mystery okay um, okay Julie I think maybe what your friend is talking about um, you need to uh, like I'm this. I'm still really confused about this. Planning to create, and I recommend that you book a consult. It's pretty simple. All you do is slide over to our firm website. We have a link in the description below, and you can click on "Speak to a Lawyer" right here, and it will pull up the the list of lawyers, and uh, um, and you can book a consult with whoever you would like. Okay, so I, I strongly encourage that you you slide over so that we can actually look at the options that are available for you. Because I'm not quite sure. What, I need to kind of get a better idea what's what's happening. So, <coughs> excuse me. So passing the um, <coughs> PEBC exams, and my friend told me that I have to create it as fast as I can because my score will increase after six months. I don't know what they're referring to. Um, scores don't increase until you've worked for a year. 
um, well, really, you need to you need to be able to get into the pool. So, like completion of education, like there are certain factors that grant points under the CRS criteria. And uh, so I'm a little confused, Julia, at exactly what you're asking here. Okay. Um, all right. Oracle says, what is the chance of 470 getting an ITA? Um, well, if the <laughs> if the minister decides to, this fine fellow here decides to do targeted draws, then CRS scores will become less important. So it just it just depends. Um, uh, Juste says, is there any differences when you apply for express entry from Canada or from another country? Can you get more points if you are uh, internal candidate? Well, yeah, absolutely you can because you can get points for international studies if you completed uh, you know a post secondary um, education in Canada. Um, you can get points for having completed work experience in Canada. So that, absolutely in Canada you have more points. Okay. Yes, the bottom is talking about the express entry tracker. It's really glitchy. The key with that is to do everything you can to try to make sure the information you're putting in there is exactly how you worded it in your EAPR. And one of the problems is that I used to have an awesome little link that I could go back and I could look and see exactly what was put into the EAPR information. But now IRCC has blocked that off, unfortunately, so no longer can people go back and see. So I sure hope you kept a copy of your EAPR when you filed it. But in terms of getting it linked, yeah, that's the bottom. There's just, yeah, I don't know what to say other than um, you have to make sure that everything is 100% correct. And if it's still not linking, you can try to call the call center. But ultimately, uh, there are glitches all over the place still with IRCC in its system. And that's new. And anytime there's a new addition to one of their, uh, their systems, there's always glitches that have to be ironed out. Okay, Nisha says, do I need, and this is a great express entry question, do I need an ECA if I have completed high school in my country but post-secondary diploma in Canada? No, you don't. You don't need to get an ECA for your high school. Hey, Chris, good to connect. Thanks for, uh, thanks for giving me a shout out, my friend. Okay, let's see here. We've got lots of great express entry questions. Ecta says, do I need to list my promoted designation separately if my tier code remains the same within the same organization under the work history and personal history? I have only one EVL stating both. I, um, I would absolutely split them up. I do if there's a, usually when people's designation changes, there's a salary change or there's some additional responsibilities that are added on that they might still keep them within the same not code, but it's a separate position. And if you go to the my favorite site of all, and let's slide over here and I'll show you. My favorite site of all is the IRCC, and this is really where the, you get the program delivery instructions for how IRCC assesses these. And if you look at, let's just shift down to work experience here. And then if you look, what is it asking you to provide here? So you need a reference letter, okay, and you can say it has all these things, should indicate all positions held, right? So if it says that, then I do it. It's as simple as that. But great question. I love express entry questions. Okay, let's see here. Um, <laughs> Nandan says, what are the ABCs I should keep in mind to move to Canada? I recommend, Nandan, that you slide over and that you book a consultation with uh, with one of us over here at Holthy Immigration Law. We can go through, we can help you to navigate your way through and to actually help you create a strategic plan. There's nothing worse than when you're going through the process and not knowing all of your options. And that's what the consultation really does for you. Okay, Uzair, you're very welcome. Uh, and yes, Chris in Toronto, great to have you there. Um, yeah, Raquel, 415 is really low. So is it impossible to get selected for PR? We don't know what the minister is going to do with the targeted draws. So, but if it's just pure human capital, I've never, it's been, I think the lowest, um, I'm trying to think, things are messed up, but under uh, the no program specified draws, if I'm not mistaken, I think it may have dropped down to 413 at one time. Obviously, I've been at this for years. But let's just take a look just for curiosity. Sometimes I like to jog my memory and see how well I can remember everything that's that's transformed this world of express entry. But let's go here and let's just take a look. I'm curious. So we're going to go here. We know what the lowest ever was. That was that crazy CEC of 75. And then we also had some 
CECs that were at, at lower than under under uh, 400. But let's just see. We're going to go with the score ranked. We're going to sort it. Okay, so federal skilled trades, of course, is lower. CEC, you can see these ones. Federal skilled trades, CEC. No program. Yep, I got it right. So the lowest it's ever been for no program specified was way back in 2017. And that was before you get extra points for French language, extra points for siblings, um, those types of things. 413 is the lowest that it dropped down to back then. You can see how popular, how competitive the express entry system is now. And largely, the reason that these CS, CRS scores have continued to climb up, and if we flip this around and look, just reverse it, you can see, you know, back in 2018, you can see provincial nominees, the highest that the, the scores have been is 902. Well, they only invited 200 people back then. And so, um, yeah, that little supplemental draw, 91B. So that 902 was the highest it's been. And then no program specified draws at the very beginning were also all the way up to 886. And the reason for that and is because in the very early days of Express Entry, the reason for that is because they gave 600 points for anyone who had an LMIA-based work permit. So if you were a worker who worked for McDonald's as a food service supervisor and you had an LMIA-based work permit, you instantly got an extra 600 points. So 600 meant that the person really only had 286 human capital points. So they made modifications and changed it. And so since that time, you can see it's continued to remain quite high. All right, little historical drift down memory lane. <laughs> All right. Great question, Raquel. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Melwin, dependent 22 and under. So if the dependent turns 22, they're no longer dependent that can be included in uh, a permanent resident application unless they are dependent as a result of a disability or something like that. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, Desagon says, hey Mark, do we now have the criteria who qualifies from the last postgrad extension of up to 18 months? A lot of confusion if, it, if it's for a permit expiring until December 2023 or if it includes early 2024. So we do not have it. It hasn't been released yet. The minister said April 6th. So we'll see what happens come April 6th, what the actual instructions are. If it follows with what they've done in the past, um, the minister did indicate that uh, people that had benefited from the past 18-month uh, post-grad extension would be able to benefit from this one. So if they qualified in 2022, they would be able to qualify in 2023. Um, but based on previous history, when they announce it, it's typically just for that year. So post-grad work permits expiring in December 31st of 2023. That's my best guess at this stage, but we don't have the specific details. Okay. All right, Johnson says, hello, Mark, my tier is 64410, can still create a profile. <coughs> no, you can't, because that second digit is the one that tells the tale. And your second digit is a four, which means you're a tier four, and it would need to be a three or two, one, or zero of that second digit. Um, okay, Harpreet says, what's your opinion on early 470s with last two huge draws? I think it's like... Okay, well, let's take a look. And this is, oh, it's fun. We spend a lot of time speculating about this, right, guys? Let's go back here. We did some searching of, of the actual stuff, but let's take a look at the candidates in the pool. So as of March 22nd, a week ago, when the round of invitation occurred, okay, it was March 20, March 23rd when the round actually occurred. But, um, but on March the 22nd, when they had the last, you know, who was in the pool, there might have been a few more that came in, you know, before the, the 23rd. But you can see how many are there. So they went down into the four, like 484. So they pulled out a bunch of people here. Okay, they pulled in everybody. There's only 444 that came in above 490. Um, and then so then 444 there, 534 and 310. So you can do the math, right? 9, 10, 11, 12. You got about 1300 or so, 1300. And then the bulk of the rest all came in here. So at 484, there's probably still 3,000 or more that are at 41 or higher. And then you can see 471, there's almost 21,000 people at that level. So if you're just trying to guess, and if they did another 7,000, 
you know, early 470s, the beginning, the low 470s, it's going to be really, really difficult uh, to see that happening unless they did a number of large, large volume draws. But heck, you know, we have seen um, our dear minister here willing to do just about anything, it seems like, except do rounds of invitations for CEC only, which I still can't figure out why the heck he's not doing it. And I'd love to get his explanation for it. Minister, I'd love for you to join me on my Canadian Immigration Podcast and just talk about express entry. Talk about the challenges that you as a minister face. You know, I think sometimes it's beneficial for people to understand that you have a brutally difficult job and that the Minister of Immigration within Canada is one of the most difficult portfolios. I would argue as difficult as the Prime Minister especially given the fact that the <clears throat> prime minister's office does basically everything for him and he doesn't really have to think that, the, you know, that when it comes to minister, you've got a lot of uh, way more public appearances. It's way more difficult. And so I've got a lot of compassion for, for Minister Fraser, but boy, transparency. The only thing that I don't like about what Minister Fraser does is these splashes for political purposes and, um, and then leaving people hanging without the actual details on how these things are going to play out. So there we go, Harpreet. I went down a path probably I didn't intend to, but hey, you asked the question. Ridwan, hello, how are you? Okay, um, Manish says, can I use a university scholarship letter? Nope, you can't. Um, you can't use that. Um, if you're going through FSW, you need to actually have, you need to actually have those liquid funds. They have to be used for the purposes of settlement and they have to be available to you. And no, I'd never use a uni university scholarship letter. Mm -mm. Um, in your case, Manish, you may need to complete your studies, work for a year, qualify under the Canadian Experience class, and then um, through, well, if, it's, if the minister doesn't do any changes, uh, you know, go through one of the no program specified draws where if you are drawn under CEC, you don't need to show proof of funds. Um, Okay, uh, Olesin says, is it possible to change my profile to unaccompanying in order to push up my score? Yeah, it is. But if your spouse is in Canada, then that's something I would never, ever recommend. And ultimately, there needs to be a justification for why your spouse isn't coming. Like a real one, not I just want to increase my score. I've seen, you know, immigration officers try to allege misrepresentation when people have said, you know, why is your spouse not coming? Accompanying you? Well, they're not coming because I want to increase my score. And personally, I really, really don't like what immigration has done in terms of the whole comprehensive ranking system and how they punish, um, you know, uh, couples, how they punish um, married or common law couples. They really do. Because often the, the one primary, the principal applicant is going to have higher human capital than their spouse. Often the spouse, um, you know, th there's one that's always going to be stronger. And so an individual, they just treat them differently. And I think, I think that's unfair. You know, when you have a spouse that's in Canada and and they're they're there and uh, you know, I think you're you're gonna have a greater likelihood of, of settling. But that's my yeah, that's my uh, thought. Had a little sneeze there. Okay, let's see what we've got next. Um, okay, Nigel. Good question. Should an international student stop work on the date they receive their final grade or the date they get the program completion letter or whichever is later? Well, the, the reality is you're not going to, uh, you know, you're not going to get your completion letter um, before your final grades. And the answer is the date that you receive confirmation that you've, you've met the graduation requirements. It's that letter that drives the ship for postgrad work permits. It's that stage. Um, Nandan, you're very, very welcome. Okay. Um, okay. Marianne, hello. Connecting in on LinkedIn. What do you say if the spouse of the skilled person got refused for her open work permit? What should we do? Well, I recommend you book a consult, Marianne, so that we can take a look and see what the circumstances were around that, uh, that refusal. And if you're looking for more information and trying to figure it out, we have a lot of information right on our firm website. If you go to Legal Help, this one right here at the top, you'll see that we have information on refused applications, judicial reviews, reconsideration requests. So, and uh, and Cedric has put together a lot of detail that talks about all aspects of the actual process. So you definitely want to, to check that out. But at the end of the day, click on Speak to a Lawyer and book a consultation with one of us and we can canvas the options that are available. In some cases, you may wish to reapply. And, uh, and once again, like that when I, like if you look up here, we've got a ton of blog posts on this topic. You can go to our blog 
and then search for refused. Let's see if we can see what comes up here with our search feature. Sometimes I can get it to work, other times it has issues. Okay, so my visa application was refused. Reconsideration, um, how to you know submit the request for GCMS notes. Um, yeah, so there's there's a bunch of blog posts even on our website that you can access as well as <coughs> excuse me as well as right here on our channel um, you'll see if you go if you're on the channel the YouTube channel you can go here I'll see if I can find it here to the search button and then seriously come on where is it here search there it is and then I can just type refused and let's see what comes up so study permit refused do this now Okay, refused visa, be honest. Canadian visa refusers, there might be a solution. Okay, so top 10 reasons your study permit is refused. Overcoming a TR to PR refusal in federal court. You can see express entry refused. Here's what you must do now. So you can see all of these. Um, yeah, what are your options? Uh, you know, Cedric has reconsideration, judicial review, and reapply. So there's tons, tons of advice, content, direction, all designed to help you guys sort your way through these difficult situations. But above all, you know, <laughs> the one thing I tell people is, look, if you hire us in the beginning, we can avoid a lot of the simple mistakes that people make when they get their applications rejected. Julia, you're very welcome. Okay. Um, okay. And there's going to be more information, like I said before, that's going to be coming about. Those of you who are asking questions about the post-grad work permit, April 6th is the day when they're going to release that information. So I'll make sure that we... Um, I have a special uh, live video where we talk about that. <clears throat> Ekta, you're very welcome. Okay. Um, all right, let's take a look at uh, Benny here. This is another, this is all about express entry. So, hey, Mark, my score is 450. How many points can I get from French learning, TCF or TEF? Well, the easiest way to do that, you guys, once again, is to pull it up and let's take a look together. So if we do a search here and we go to IRCC, EE, uh, CRS criteria that'll take us to where we want to go so then we go here and we open up the page and then let's take a look so there's a couple things that people forget so as a principal applicant you get points for language okay official language languages there's a reason it says s there so if you scroll down here and we go to the language section so here's the breakdown of points so age and then level of education and then language okay so if you look at <clears throat> official language, <clears throat> excuse me, there are points for first official language. So you can get a maximum of up to 136 if you are single, 128 if you have a partner, a spouse or common law partner. And so that's the maximum with just the first official, but many people forget that you also get extra points for a second official language. So let's say you do write one of the, the French language tests, okay, and you score at least the equivalent of a CLB 9 or higher, you could get an additional 24 points if you're single, 22 if you're married or common law, with that French. So that's, that's the maximum. And for each ability that you have, each, each of the, 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 the abilities, you can get this many points per ability depending upon where you rank. Okay, so that's the first thing. But then what most people are really curious about is the big bonus points. And those are all set out here in the additional points. And this is where when you have a, an NCLC 7, NCLC 7 or higher in all four French language, and then if you have really good English, so if you have no uh, CL before or lower in English or didn't take a test at all, you still get 25 points. But if you have English and it's at least a CLB 5, which heck, all of you of course do, but you have that, that high score of NCLC 7, you can get an extra bonus points of 50. So you do the math. What are the maximum? A maximum of 50 plus, if we go back here to the second, second, oh, let's go back here to the right one. Okay, so when you go back to the second um, language ability right here, official, second official language, you can get 50 plus an additional 24. So almost 74 additional points if your French is like rock solid. All right, great question. That was awesome. That's a question that really lets me teach. Okay, all right. Now, um, okay, so... 
RCM00. Okay, so this is, this is, I strongly encourage you, my friend, to register for, as I slide back here, I'm going to just, I'm just going to connect in here to our immigration courses as soon as it gets pulled up. Um, I'm going to share my screen for you because I strongly, strongly encourage that you subscribe right here to the Express Entry course. And why do I say that for you? Um, and I'll just pull up your comment here so everybody can see, is because within here, <clears throat> you have to take this accreditation anyways, and when you enroll in it, you can get up to five hours of CICC approved credit with this course, okay? Now, the reason I'm saying that for you is because um, you will be able to learn everything that you need to learn about the express entry process. But let's dive into your question and we'll answer it. So, the REP PR portal is not showing the FSW, FST, CEC programs under categories to apply for clients after receiving an ITA. Where do I apply for these programs? So this is all automatic. So the answers that you put in into the profile will dictate whether or not the invitation to apply which program it's in. The ITA will designate it. But the answers that you provide in the APR are going to be all the same. You're going to fill in all the information. Well, they're not absolutely identical. But for the most part, <clears throat> the, um, uh, the questions that are asked in your EAPR, you don't select. It's a part of the ITA, and it's done all automatically. So the ITA, when you receive that invitation um, in, the, in the letter that's, uh, that's uploaded into your rep portal for, that, for your client, it will show which program they were drawn under, and then you just simply follow through filling out the information in the EAPR, and, um, and in there, uh, when you're completing it, um, the categories, like you can see in the ITA which program you're drawn under, okay? And at the profile stage, um, it's, it's changed there at the profile stage. But yeah, if you want to book a consult, I'm happy to, to walk you through that as well. Okay, um, okay, Mary says, what about another knock like 62023? Well, that's eligible. It's a two, tier two. Okay, let's see what else. We've got a few more minutes here. I don't think we have any super chats. At least I don't see any supers coming through. Nope. Okay. Make sure we don't miss any of those people. They're definitely prioritized. Okay. Let's see. Um, okay. Mike's uh, from OK. <laughs> he says, I have nine months of Canadian experience. Should I create an Express Entry profile now or wait for three more months? The profile will not allow you to, to be created unless you have foreign work experience of at least a year. Some people are able, able to get their profile submitted a little bit early. In fact, maybe one day less than um, 11 months, so like 10 months and 30 days or whatever, because it rounds up. <clears throat> and so any <clears throat> any part day that you worked in a month, the, uh, the um, CRS system calculates it on a month-by-month -month basis. But no, you wouldn't be able to submit a profile unless you otherwise qualified through one of the other programs through foreign work experience. Okay. Um, Let's see, it was there. I think I hit your question already about the T4s. Um, yeah, the T4s are just fine. You don't need the notices of assessment. Uh, Nifemi, good to see you from Victoria. Hello. And Elise is over in DRC, Congo. Hello. And oh, I see. I answered all those questions already. <laughs> okay. I jumped all the way back up to the top. Okay. So let's keep zipping through some more questions. Um, Uh, 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 Talis says, bless you, thank you. And Nigel, you're very welcome. Um, okay, yeah, let's talk about this one, Caddy. I'm going to give you one of these ones because this is a great opportunity to showcase kind of what Express Entry is really about. Can we count work experience in different skilled occupations for FSW program as long as we meet the requirement of one year continuous work experience in our primary occupation? The short answer is 100% yes. Once you hit that one year and you meet the, the eligibility criteria, which is really the selection criteria, and let's just pull it up here. And uh, I love showing people exactly where they can find the information. So FSW eligibility right here, if we pull it up, you will see, and let's just remove uh, this comment. You, as we go through here, you'll see that there are selection factors involved. So in order to qualify for the program, you've got they do an assessment that's very similar to the comprehensive ranking system. It's not the same because different points are awarded. But as long as with one year of skilled work experience, you can hit the 67 points 
on the selection factor point grid. And you can see points are accumulated. Uh, they're different than CRS. They're assigned different point totals, just like the various PNPs sometimes have their own point thresholds. Language tests are given a certain number of points you can see here. And so after education, after going through and assessing your abilities, and the one I want to point out here is that um, for work experience, you can see you get a certain number of points for one year of work experience. And if you only need nine points to hit that 67, and the only way you're getting these points is with one occupation, okay, for the FSW only. You're only going to get the points. Well, let me jump back here, sorry. You're only going to get the points towards the, the eligibility for the FSW <coughs> within one knock. But if you can hit 67 points with just that one continuous full-time paid work experience that's skilled, you can see here, three or higher, and then it is one year continuous, full-time, um, that if you can hit that, in, and it has to be in the same type of job within the last 10 years, if you can hit that uh, with the 67 points with just one, then absolutely you can then use your other work experience under the comprehensive ranking system to score those actual points. So great question, Caddy. Love it. All right. Um, Okay, uh, strawberries says, can an open work permit holder study friends to increase CRS? Absolutely you can. Um, okay, Ecta says, can we update the funds from 13500 to whatever amount lower than it if we are invited under CEC? So basically what she's asking is, if I listed $13,500 uh, $13, is the amount of settlements I have, and... Um, you know, can I list something lower if the actual level I need to meet is lower? Okay, let's let's slide over here and I'll show. Some people would struggle to understand exactly what's happening here. So if we go to IRCC, -E -E, um, oh, let's type in here proof of funds. Okay, we'll pull this up and then we'll go here and see exactly what she's referring to. So at 13.5, she's definitely a single and you can see the minimum is 13,310. So she's saying, can I show 13,310? Well, right off the bat, <coughs> excuse me, Act, I'll tell you, don't bother. Like it's a couple hundred dollars and by the end of the year, they may very well increase it up. So um, so please, please understand that this 1,003, this 13,310 um, is, yes, that's the minimum threshold. And technically that's what you have to demonstrate. Um, but uh, if you do have listed 13,500, and then you want to demonstrate less, I would make sure that I explain that uh, in a letter of explanation why it's less, but also confirming that it's still above that amount. But for that little amount, I would not even bother. Like if you, like what's the difference with, with what do we have there, $190 difference? It's probably not even worth it. All right, but letters of explanation, it may very well be possible. Okay, good question. All right, we've got, oh, we have hit the end of our time. Okay, well, finish off here because you guys have given, you've, you've had so many really good questions on Express Entry. Age is locked at the ITA day or at the time pure application is submitted. Thanks. Age is locked at the date of the ITA. And the one thing that I love more than anything is to explain to you guys why it's that way. So I'll finish off with this last good question. <clears throat> and if we're here and we go A11.2 uh, IRCCEE. -E, and we go here, this is the actual program delivery instruction from IRCC that confirms that. And so we can just, just jump right down to exemption to section A11.2, candidates whose birthday occurs after they receive an ITA. So what this means is, exemption, it means that A11.2 is all about making changes between your profile and your EAPR. So if there are changes that occurred in what you put into your EAPR that are different from what happened in your profile, then in some cases it can cause you to become ineligible for express entry if the change occurs. Um, and one of those potential could be a birthday. So if you, had a, if you received an ITA and then you had a birthday before you submitted your EAPR, well then you would lose points. But the government said, okay, that sounds like it's unfair. So we're gonna provide this exemption for candidates whose birthday occurs after they receive an ITA. So if that's the case, essentially what this says is the birthday locks in, so you're not going to lose points <clears throat> uh, for <clears throat> excuse me, having a birthday occur. And in, in many cases, you'll see that 
under your, um, uh, in many cases, this isn't applied automatically within your profile. So when you're filing uh, your EAPR, you may notice that, oh, my points are lower. Don't worry, <clears throat> because that policy saves you. <clears throat> all right. Well, it looks like <laughs> that is the end of the line. And I want to thank all of you so much for being a part of this. Um, we'll, we'll turn on our sign off music here. If I can find it, here it is. And we'll put it down, keep it on the lowdown. All right. So it was absolutely wonderful having everybody tune in today. Um, once again, this podcast and, and the podcast and the, the live streams that we're offering are sponsored by journey business plans and really, really appreciate their, uh, their support of the channel and the support of what we're trying to do here. Um, if I flip over here, I want to also remind all of you that we here, let me go back to our actual firm website. I think it's this one here. If you go to our approach right here, you will see that we offer, and yes, absolutely join the newsletter, direct lawyer to client collaboration. So you work directly with the immigration lawyers of the firm. And I, I'll be honest, I absolutely love this process. You maintain control of your immigration application. You can fast track the process because there isn't this middle step of some paralegal um, transcribing some goofy questionnaire that your rep representative has given you. You can save an unnecessary immigration legal fees because you're doing your part and we're working together on this. And we really truly feel that this is an innovative representative model and we'd love for you to learn more about it. So if you come here, you can watch the video. It's all about client-centered, firm-supported, and submit your application direct with our with our lawyer-to-client collaboration. So check it out. And uh, yes, we absolutely love doing this. And so can you hire Hope Immigration Law and the lawyers within our firm? Um, can you do that to help you with your application, to help you submit it and file it? 100% yes. You can learn more about us all right now. Igor is going to be joining our ranks pretty soon. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And I wish you guys all the very, very best. And uh, hopefully this was all helpful. Dolores over in Germany, greetings to you. And uh, thanks so much. Remember, tomorrow, especially for Shavam. Oh, I missed my question. The reality is Shavam. Alicia and I will be live tomorrow. So come and join us. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Take care. We'll see you.